what this is. Some kind of pirate radio setup. I guess the armed maybe gave it away, huh? Hey, Greg, guess what this is? I have no idea. It's a complete two-watt radio station. Yeah, we thought this would be fun for Dharma to play with while she was recuperating. Sure helped me through the summer of 82 when I couldn't leave the house. Remember that, Dharma? Sure. The air was too thick and the ground was too soft. Oh. Sure, 82. Hey, you want to do a radio show with me? We can meet the Deister and the G-Man on the big rock weasel. I don't think so, Dharma. Oh, that kind of attitude is going to ruin Rocktober, G-Man. You guys realize this is against the law? You have to have a license from the FCC to broadcast. Oh, this is pretty small time, Greg. But Dharma, if you do get caught, don't panic and try to flush the equipment. First of all, that was an illegal cable box. And I was trying to hide it behind the toilet. It fell in. Yeah, that it dried out. We got showtime. <laughs> You're listening to Radio Dharma. All Dharma, all the time. You give me 22 minutes, I'll give you the Dharma. <laughs> Radio Dharma. Dharma. <laughs> Morning, Greg. Morning, Marcy. I'm a wacky sidekick. <laughs> so I see. You guys really think anybody's listening? Oh, yeah. Tons of people. We checked. You could pick us up all the way down to the laundromat. <laughs> That's right, it's the all rap and all rock and making music station where you get weather on the half hour traffic on the ones and continuous hit music, music, music. I'm gonna get some coffee, coffee, coffee. All right, and back to our contest question. Would you rather be hit on the fire or have a <laughs> sit on your... <laughs> Again, our number is 857 oh, we have a caller! We have a caller! <laughs> You're on the air. Please turn down your radio. Hi, this is Dave. I love your show. I'm a long-time listener, first-time caller. What? Could you play some Springsteen? Oh, you know what, Dave? I would love to, but um, we only have the reels reel hooked up, so our selection is limited. Abby and Dharma sing Wheels on the Bus. Oh, check this out. It's a tape of my father's band rehearsing. I never knew they recorded anything. Get here. Get here. It's dead. Get here. Get here. Get here. Get here. Get here. And the Moody Moves recorded off the Mike Douglas Show August 5th, 1972. Wow, 72? That's when Peter Frampton was with the Moody Blues. Let's hear that. Oh, right. Uh, Peter Frampton never sang with the Moody Blues. Sure did, dude. Uh, uh... You're out of your mind. Uh, the opinions of my husband, Greg, do not necessarily reflect those of the station, the management, or my wacky side friend. Uh, okay, 1972, Moody Blues, Seventh Sojourn. No Peter Franklin got the CD right here. CD's not going to help you, dude. They removed his name when they reissued it, contractual reasons. Oh, that is a load of bull! <laughs> Greg, we are on the air. <laughs> All right, there's some very exciting radio people. Frampton or no Frampton, you be the judge. Here are the Moody Blues. Wheels on the bus go round and round and round. round. And the wheels on the bus go round. Greg, we should go if we're going to get 18 in. Hold on. Yes, 72, Moody Blues, no Frampton. <laughs> well, there you have it. <laughs> What is this? Wait, wait. Oh, wow. That's not mine. No, it's mine. <laughs> I've been looking for this for 20 years. You know, they don't make these anymore. Oh, that's just a damn shame. Look at that. Been rolled up in a ball all this time. Not a wrinkle. <laughs> The 
fish around in that box, Greg. There should be a pair of burnt orange hush puppies. Oh! I wonder what's got into your mother there. I can't imagine. Hey! Hey! Listen to this. Burn my foot? Nope. That's my father. You're kidding. No. It's good. I know. It's our number one most requested song. Really? <laughs> I got pulled in and said, play it again. That's really good. You know, I really always said he was a pretty good musician, but I never took him seriously, you know? I mean... He also said he was the Kerber baby and that once he had a monkey to fish, so... You and I had very different childhoods, didn't we? He really was a good musician. I gotta wonder what happened. You know how it is. People get busy, they start a career. No, that's not it. Oh, probably not. Edward, where are you going? Uh, Bob Gunderson's thing about selling his boat, I thought I'd take a look. And do we really think we want to present ourselves to the public in this? We're comfortable in this. <laughs> oh, Edward Montgomery. You know, if I let you do things just because you're comfortable while you spend your day sitting in a lazy boy recliner watching a large screen television sipping beer out of a cab. If I change my clothes, can I have a lazy boy? Of course not. I'll say hi to Bob Gunderson for you. Oh, by the way, I'm not wearing underwear. I don't know why I ever did. Hello? Uh, no, they turned off the radio station. Because my wife had to go to physical therapy. Ye yes, they can turn it off because it's not a real radio station. Fine, write a letter. I'm not going to put a record on. I I actually, you know what? Th there is a record I want to play. Uh, uh, okay. Um, here are the Moody Blues from their album Seven Sojourn on the original vinyl, which does not feature Mr. Peter Frampton, something known to anyone capable of tying his own shoes. And I think you know who you are, and I think you owe me an apology. Hello? Oh, why... why? Why, thank you, ma'am. Uh, wh would you mind saying that on the air? Uh, hold on. Uh, uh, go ahead. Okay. I just wanted to say I was listening yesterday, and I really liked the way you handled that guy. Oh, well, he didn't do his homework. <laughs> we need people like you to drown out these other idiots who love to just run their mouths off. Well... <laughs> Well, I, I, I'm just one guy, but I do what I can. They're all a bunch of crackpots. Elvis is alive. Cigarettes cause lung cancer. I see spaceships. Wait, 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 hold, hold on there. I, I think it's pretty widely accepted that cigarettes do cause lung cancer. Says you. Well, yes, in 40 years of research. By doctors who are paid shills of the chewing gum industry. <laughs> Hold on, uh, or don't. Hello? Wow, what a wacko, huh? <laughs> Takes all kinds. You want to talk about a conspiracy? Let's talk about Major League Baseball juicing up the ball like they're more home runs. Well, how do you know it's the ball? Maybe they're just getting better players. It's the same guys, only now they're hitting more home runs. Look at the stats. <laughs> It's an interesting question. Major League Baseball, are they juicing the ball? What do you think? Give me a call. 
And while we wait, here are the Moody Blues. So being English, they're probably not baseball fans, but might enjoy rounders. The English game from which baseball is derived. <laughs> Wow. I love that song. Who is that? <laughs> it's you, Larry. Oh, wow. Yeah. Hey, Harry. Listen to that. Your old man wrote that. So, Larry, did you ever do gigs? Did you ever get up on stage and yell, Hello, San Francisco? The closest I ever got was, Hello, Shapiro Bar Mitzvah. <laughs> Oh, man, they did this 26-minute free-form Hava Nagila. It's a tough one to end. Should have seen your father in those days, Dharma. He loved performing. He would get on stage and just light up. Mm. Once. And everyone did back then. So why did you quit? You know, music. Let me explain something to you about the music business, Dharma. You can't get anywhere unless you're willing to sell your soul to corporate America for a sack of magic beans, a handshake, and a one-way ticket to where are you now? <laughs> Phil. Abby, why did he really stop? Well, he was just starting out, and he knew he'd be on the road, and you were on the way. He gave it all up because of me? No. He gave it all up for you. Running suit, Gregory. The ugly orange velour running suit. He was with you when he found it, and he has not taken it off since. Wow. So, what do you think, people? Is dead out of line, or should mother take a chill pill? Our lines are open. What, people? Who are you talking to, Gregory? Sorry, mother, it's the top of the hour. I gotta go. <laughs> Time for As I See It with Greg Montgomery. This is San Francisco, folks, and it rains from time to time. If you're a local television station, there's no need to send your weatherman outside. We know what rain looks like. Just tell us it's raining and do it from a regular desk, not from Action Storm Watch Central. <laughs> and remember, folks, we've got 99 years to go. Let's not be hasty in naming something the storm of the century. <laughs> Think about that while Mr. Leo Sayer makes me feel like dancing. Nice! Thank you. Hey, check this out. Every Monday night is open mic night at Paul's 24th Street. Well, that's great. I'll, I'll give him a plug on On the Town with Craig Montgomery. <laughs> father-daughter dinner with Larry, pull out the old guitar, and then bing, bang, boom, he's back in the music business. How, how exactly is that going to happen? I have no idea. That's why I said bing, bang, boom, instead of something specific. <laughs> wow, that was good. Promise you won't tell Abby I had meat. <laughs> that was eggplant, Larry. <laughs> Oh, man, I could have had meat. Yeah, they have an open mic night going on here. Cool. There is not one dessert here you could add meat to. I signed you up. To sing here? Yeah, I'm thinking you get back on stage, you know, work your songs, get your chops Whoa, back. Whoa, hang on. I don't even have my guitar. It's in the car. I'll go get it. No, stop. Wait. Take a look at these people. They don't want to hear from an old guy like me. Larry, it's open mic night. Nobody wants to hear from any of these people. <laughs> Sorry. Rock on. Dharma. I'm not going to sing. I haven't rehearsed. I'm Logie from the eggplants. Okay, fine. A little practice, then you'll come back next week, do a couple Mondays, and Dharma. then I... I'm not going to play. Not now, not ever. What? What's the point? The point is you 
love music, you could be great. No, maybe once. Oh, come but on. Dharma, let it go. Why? Because I'm the father, and I said so. Because I'm the father, and I said so? Come on, Larry, you're kidding, right? I'm 52 years old, and I have other things to do with my life now. Okay, fine. Larry? Fine. You have your excuses. You always have your excuses. Well, you know what? Don't use me as one of them. Come on, Marcy. Dharma! Dharma! For those of you who were with us yesterday, our legal puzzler, what single act is it a crime, a breach, and a tort? The answer is, of course, embezzlement. <laughs> and that sound tells us it's time to wrap up Greg's legal pad for today. <laughs> and now, side three of the rock opera, Quadrophenia. <laughs> what happened? Father didn't want to go on, and they had a big fight in the middle of the restaurant, and I didn't get to play Foggy Mountain Breakdown. <laughs> My father gave up something he was really good at, and I want to help him get it back, and he won't let me. Dharma, are you sure you're doing this for him? Because it sounds more like you're doing it for yourself. Don't talk to me in your radio voice. <laughs> Look. You have no reason to feel guilty. Maybe he did quit because of you, but it's not your fault. You didn't choose to be born. In what universe did I not choose to be born? <laughs> Should have seen that coming, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Do you know the transmitter's unplugged? <laughs> what? Uh, we must have forgotten to plug it back in after we're using the heating pad. Marcy, when, when was this? Oh, yesterday. So for an entire day, I've been sitting here talking to myself. Thank you for having fun, and isn't that what really matters? No, Marcy. What really matters is that basically I was sitting in my bedroom talking into a hairbrush on K. Greg. <laughs> And that my parents were still married and the whole family worked together and we solved crimes. Thank you, Marcy. Somehow that actually makes me feel a little better. Oh. Hey. Brought you back your guitar. Thanks. Listen, Larry, I'm really sorry about what happened. I should never have called you a quitter. I don't remember you calling me a quitter. Well, not in so many words, but all that stuff I said about excuses, I shouldn't have said that. Okay, but you didn't call me a quitter. Yes, I did, Larry. It's the same thing. A person who always has excuses is basically a quitter. Whoa, that's a little rough, Yes, Dharma. and I shouldn't have said it. I understand in the heat of the moment, but coming back and grinding on us? <laughs> I guess what I'm trying to say is that if you stopped your music career because I was born, then that's something that I should be proud of, you know? I mean, how many other kids have a dad that would make a sacrifice like that? Dharma. Let me show you something. Dear Mr. Finkelstein, unfortunately, your submission to Electra Records does not meet our needs at the present time. The rejection letter. One of many. Not suitable. Not interested. Columbia House of Records and Tapes is not a recording company. <laughs> wow. I mean, people thought I quit music because of you. And it was easy to let them think that, rather than to let them know what was really going on. So if someone had liked your stuff, you would have gone out on the road? Oh, yeah. In a 
minutes. <laughs> but then, I would have missed out on being there to see you grow up. So that's the story. It just wasn't that good. No, Larry, you can't base that off of one box of rejection letters. I got five. <laughs> I really loved your song. Maybe you were just ahead of your time. You know, that's what they said about my spray-on gravy. Truth was plain to see the miracle of life. One and one is three. He played music, he talked about legal stuff, he had a total blast in his honey. No, I did not. Well, not now he didn't, but then he did. Do your radio voice for them. Can we just drop this, please? Good, smooth. <laughs> I say, if a man finds something that makes him happy, more power to him. Would you like some more? I guess. <laughs> oh, sorry. Oh, no, 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 no problem. It's 100% synthetic. It blots right up. <laughs> it's like AstroTurf. Oh, watch this. And these are beats. <laughs> I have done everything that I could for you. I have stood by you in thick and thin. I have put aside my dreams so that you could build an empire. I have endured the pain and humiliation of childbirth to bring your son into the world. Humiliation? Hold your question until the end. I will not spend the rest of my days on the fuzzy and stain repellent arm of a man who chooses to dress like a rec room Davenport. <laughs> Dad, maybe you should give up the running set. Son, I know your mother. Eventually, she'll get used to it. I guess. And then I'll take it off. 